Hi, let us continue with our discussions about the curtailment of reinforcement in reinforced concrete member. Previously, we talked about the simplified rules for the curtailments of bar in beams based on the recommendations given by the British Standard Act 110, which is found in Table 3.24. In this video, we're going to talk about the curtailment rules given by the British Standard in reinforced concrete slab, which you may refer to Figure 3.25 of British Standard at 110. Let us first look at the simply supported slab. For simply supported slab, we are looking at the bottom reinforcement. Maximum moment normally occurs at the mid-span, as represented here. Reinforcement is provided in order to resist the maximum moment. You may have 100% of the reinforcement area at the mid-span. Towards the support, the amount of reinforcement may be reduced to 40%. The curtailment can be done at the distance of 0.1 times effective length from the centroid of the support which should not be greater than half of the effective depth from the face of the support and then the reinforcement extended into the support will require sufficient anchorage length of not less than 12 times the bar diameter now, if you find this difficult to understand, you may refer to this diagram. 100% of the reinforcement bar. Towards the support, you can have 40% of the bar area. Curtailment at the distance of 0.1 times the effective length, with reference to the centroid of the support, not exceeding to half of the size of the effective depth and make sure you provide sufficient anchorage within the slab not less than 12 times the bar diameter next we look at the continuous slab for continuous slab there will be sagging moment at the mid span and hogging moment at the support they shall involve the bottom reinforcement and the top reinforcement the bottom reinforcement will need to withstand the moment at the mid-span, whereas the top reinforcement should be placed near to the support in order to withstand the hogging moment. You need 100% reinforcement area to withstand the maximum moment at the mid-span. Near to the support, you may reduce to 40%. Curtailment may be done at 0.2 times the effective length. As for the top reinforcement, you need 100% of the reinforcement to withstand the maximum hogging moment at the support. At a distance of 0.15 times the effective length, which should be at least greater than 45 times the bar diameter, you may reduce the amount of reinforcement bar to 50%. And then exceeding this 0.3 times the effective length, you may stop the reinforcement. Again, you need to be careful with the measurements of the distance for the reinforcement bar to be curtailed. For the bottom reinforcement bar, we are referring to the centroid of the bearing area. Whereas for the top reinforcement, we are referring to the face of the support. Adopting these principles in the slab section, it looks something like this. 100% of the reinforcement at the mid span. Near to the support, you may reduce to 40%. Curtailment can be done at 0.2 times the effective length. As for the top reinforcement, 100% top reinforcement should be placed at the support and extended to a distance of 0.15 times of the effective length, counting from the face of the support. 
and this distance should be at least greater than 45 times the bar diameter then you may reduce the reinforcement to 50% this 50% reinforcement may be curtailed and stopped after 0.3 times the effective length this is as far as we can get from this diagram here how about the other end which is the end span since it is not specified in the diagram for the continuous member here we may adopt this where you will keep 40% of the tension reinforcement at the bottom curtail at the distance of 0.1 times the effective length allowing the reinforcement being encouraged into the support that's why you see this and this are identical next we look at the top reinforcement at the end support of the continuous slab although the curtailments and the amount of reinforcement bar is not indicated in figure 3.25 of British standard it is stated in clause 3.12, 0.3 and 0.2 which states the curtailments of the bar at the end support of the slab although normally we assume the end support is simply supported during the assessment of the moment however negative moment may arise which could lead to cracking as a result of the redistributions of the stress along the continuous band now in order to control this it states that an amount of reinforcement equals to half of the area of the bottom steel at the mid span should be provided in the top of the beam at the support and this amount should not be less than the minimum rebar area in another word you still need to put reinforcement at the end support here even though typically we assume the end support carries no moment and the amount of reinforcement bar to be provided it will be 50% of what is provided at the mid span as indicated in the diagram here by AS which is not on the basis of the AS prime of the internal support now whatever amount of reinforcement bar provided here you can simply reduce to 50% put it on top of the end support here make sure the amount of reinforcement provided here is not less than AS minimum how about the curtailment length it is also specified where it should be fully encouraged within the support and extended to at least 0.15 times the effective length or 45 times the bar diameter in another word, we are talking about the distance from the support face of at least 0.15 times the effective length but not less than 45 times the bar diameter. Now this concludes the arrangements of the reinforcement bar after curtailments in the continuous slab. Next, we look at the cantilever. Basically, the rules of curtailments for cantilever slab it will be the same as those applied for the beam 100% of the top reinforcement bar at the support towards half of the effective length or at least 45 times the bar diameter the amount of reinforcement may be reduced by 50% and this distance is measured from the support face with the effective length here measured from the centroid of the base with a distance from the support face not more than half of the effective depth this outlines to you the typical reinforcement for the cantilever slab bear in mind that for cantilever member tension reinforcement is the top reinforcement 
Now that you know the simplified rules for the curtailments of the bar in the slab, you need to know their applications. British standards clearly specify the applications of those simplified curtailment rules. To make it simple, the loading should be predominantly uniformly distributed. Now in the continuous slab, this rule applies to one single load case of maximum design loads on all spans. That means every span of the continuous slab is assumed to be subjected to the maximum design load. And then the spans are approximately equal. That means the effective length of the continuous slab should not vary significantly. In fact, if you read the references for reinforced concrete design, we have another set of simplified rules for curtailment, which looks something like this. Slightly different from the British standard. Maybe we we'll have a look and see the differences. I adopt this from this book, 7 editions of the reinforced concrete design to Eurocode written by Bill Mosley and the others in 2012. In figure 8.2, you see the simplified rules for curtailments in reinforced concrete slab, which looks something like this. Now, if you compare with the one for the bridge standard, let's say we compare with the simply supported slab, the curtailment rules are more or less the same, where the amount of reinforcement is being curtailed, which is the same as 0.1 times effective length. The only difference it will be the remaining amount of reinforcement. The reference recommend for 50% remaining, whereas British standards recommend for 40% remaining. As for the continuous slab, this will be in line with the simply supported slab. 100% bottom steel bar, 50% to the support. However, if you see the British standard, it is 100% and 40%. The locations of the curtailments it will be the same, which is 0.2 times and 0.1 times the effective length. The top reinforcement bar, it will be the same. 100% AS prime and 50% curtail at the same locations. As per the British standard. However, the top reinforcement bar at the end supports very slightly. The locations of the curtailment recommended by the reference, it will be 0.2 times the effective length. And the amount of reinforcement bar is 25% of the tension reinforcement bar at the bottom. But if you compare to the British standard, a larger amount of reinforcement bar is required. However, the anchorage length it will be slightly shorter which is equals to 0.15 times the effective length. Interestingly, if you refer to the one given in the references, it did not clearly specify the required anchorage length in the multiplications of the bar diameter, which the British standard specifically specify of 45 times the bar diameter. I believe this 45 times the bar diameter, it will be the full anchorage length by the definitions of the British standard. You may choose to adopt this 45 times the bar diameter, but bear in mind that British standard has now been superseded by Eurocode. Although British standard is no longer applicable, but due to its simplicity, Engineers tend to use them also as the complement to Eurocode, especially when Eurocode approaches most of the thing from the fundamental perspective, leading to a more complicated calculations process. 
This may not be an issue if you are using software. However, when it comes to the manual calculations or quick checking, recalculating from the first scratch, it will be quite time consuming. That's why sometimes engineers prefer to mix the applications of whichever deemed appropriate from British Standard in their design in order to complement the design based on the Euro code. Now, let's say this 45 times the bar diameter is indeed by the definitions of the British Standard while doing the curtailment equivalent to the required anchorage length. You may adopt the same principles by replacing this 45 times the bar diameter into the full anchorage length by the definitions of the Euro code 2.